I just wanted to touch upon a couple of the principles because I think if you walk away with one thing this morning, this, this is what I hope you walk away with, is that what, what we base servant leadership on is love. And it's right out of 1 Corinthians, and we're very open about it. But it's not love like you think about it. In America, we always think about love as an emotion, as eros love for the Greek. But it, and it, we treat it as agape love, which is a Greek word that's a, really a verb that's about behavior. It's not about feelings. And I love this quote by Vince Lombardi. Uh, great football coach, very tough guy. Every players were fearful of him. But he said, I don't necessarily have to like my players, but as a leader, I must love them. Love is loyalty. Love is teamwork. Love respects the dignity of the individual. This is the strength of any organization. Our owner, Jack Hershen, taught me, you know, a CEO should be a chief encouragement officer. And he taught me that through his actions. One great takeaway that I've learned from him, he starts every day, the first 20 minutes, thinking about yesterday and writing handwritten notes to his employees of what he's seen that encouraged him. And all of you are probably kind of A-type people. You're always trying to take the next hill. Well, you also need to thank people, and that's what Jack taught me. Those handwritten notes are, are like gold in our company. I'll just hit a couple more here, and then I'll, I'll, I'll close. But honesty, obviously, if you're deceptive and you cheat, you're, you're out, you're fired. But what we talk about in our company is being truthful with each other, being honest about performance. And when you're trying to, one, one big fallacy or one big problem with servant leadership is people think you always have to be nice and they're not truthful about people's performance and that causes problems. People have to pull their own weight. And so we really focus on being truthful about people's performance. And I think it's the greatest gift you can give an employee and I know when I look at the best bosses I've ever had, they were the ones that challenged me and made me better. And then finally, commitment. It's really easy to talk about servant leadership when things are going really well, but when the numbers aren't there and things are really stressful, and a lot of you and a lot of us are in very stressful situations right now with this economy, sometimes it's hard to keep it going. But well, we try to show commitment to what we're about. <clears throat> For one, we, we always give a servant leadership class. Any new supervisor goes through this. And we give this statue of Jesus washing Peter's feet. But we're really clear because there's, we have non-believers. We have quite a few uh, Jewish people working for the company, a lot of agnostics, maybe a few atheists, not sure. But we say, it, it, we do not care what you believe, but we do care about how you behave and we do model our principles after Jesus. And you may debate who he was, but you can't debate that his leadership style was incredibly effective with those that he led. The other thing we do, we try to put our money where our mouth is. This is the two by two matrix. I don't want to, it's not overly complicated, but on the vertical axes is the numbers that all of you are measured by, and me too. Are you hitting your budget? Are you hitting your numbers? The horizontal axis, though, is are you hitting the values? And if you're doing it in the right way, according to those eight words, we give you the best raise in the upper right hand corner. You're a high high. If you're a low low, you're probably going to be seeking employment elsewhere. But, um, and we do, we do let people go and, and have done that. But we try to put our money where our mouth is.